What's up, Raging Nation? How's it going? This is Alex Yu, and you're watching the Raging Nation Show. This is just a web series where we're talking about all things that matter to me in the world of upcoming films. In this episode, we're going to talk about sequels and reboots. And what's being rebooted is The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. You guys remember that film? Well, I don't. <laughs> well, I've seen the film. But I don't remember anything about it because it didn't leave me any lasting memories. It was just not a good film at all. As a matter of fact, the source material is great. It's from Alan Moore, who's responsible for V for Vendetta, which was awesome. And this film, unfortunately, was poorly executed. Which is surprising, because the director is Stephen Norrington, and he directed Blade, which I thought was absolutely fantastic. It kind of redefined the comic book genre of films and then you have him directing the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen starring Sean Connery back in 2003 from 20th Century Fox and well it you know the, the trailer seemed interesting you know it was it, it was sold as a movie that we've never seen anything like it before you know it had all these extraordinary characters like the Invisible Man uh, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde or Mr. Hyde and Dr. Jekyll I don't know and a bunch of other characters uh, but then once put together in a film it was just yeah it was just garbage <laughs> it was a film that really was completely forgettable and it felt like you know they don't need to go beyond that well, it looks like they're bringing it back. It is 2015 now. The movie came out in 2003. So 12 years later, 20th Century Fox decided that, you know what? We don't have much to work with. <laughs> we want to make comic book films, but we don't really have a whole lot to work with. Their work, they got Fantastic Four as a franchise. They got the X-Men slash Mutant Universe to work with. Uh, but as for... You know, other superhero teams, they don't have a lot other than stuff outside of Marvel. So what are they going to go with? Well, something they've already done before, the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Right now, no release date, no director, no writer. It's just been announced that they want to reboot it. And with the success of the Avengers, of course, they want to be able to make something like that. And I think that if done like done correctly if done with care i think they could put out a decent film all right so that is what's happening at 20th century fox they will be rebooting the league of extraordinary gentlemen okay hopefully they have the proper vision and the proper uh, writers uh for for a project like this all right moving on let's talk about a sequel and that is independence day 2 which is currently in going through principal photography, Roland Emmerich and producer Dean Devlin, they are doing it. They're working on this sequel. And uh, they have a number of, of returning characters from Bill Pullman to uh, Jeff Goldblum to Vivica A. Fox. No Will Smith, but they do have William Fichtner. William Fichtner is actually signed on for a major role in Independence Day 2, 3, and also 4. There's going to be three sequels. No word on when those other sequels are coming out, but 2016 is when we're getting the first sequel. And man, I think they're getting way ahead of themselves because we don't even know how people are going to react or respond to another Independence Day film. I know the first one was groundbreaking. It made a lot of money. And it was a film that I went to watch. Uh, uh, I think I watched it three times in the theater. It was a really extraordinary film. And then, um, you know, after so many years later, I'm talking about 20 years later, they decided to put out a sequel. So are people, do people really care that much anymore? I mean, I, I, I guess it feels kind of like Jurassic Park, you know, where the, the original was quite, you know, amazing. And then so many years later to bring out a new one and a lot of people are enthusiastic. Uh, but as for Independence Day 2, I don't know if the response is quite the same, but we'll see. But uh, I think that it's, I think that they're really jumping the gun, uh, you know, when they're deciding that uh, they want to make um, two more films. But anyways, William Fichtner is signed on for three films. He's definitely going to be in the second one, but just because he signed on for two more films doesn't mean that there's going to be two more films. But in some, 
in, in any case, uh, uh, Dean Devlin and Roland Emmerich do have ideas for uh, future films. Whether they're going to get made, that's still up to the studios. It really depends on box office receipts uh, when, the, uh, when the sequel comes out next year. Anyways, the last thing I want to talk about is a sequel slash reboot. Okay, it's more of a sequel, okay? It's more definitely more of a sequel, but it did reboot the franchise, okay? But it looks like this sequel is not happening anymore, and that is Tron 3. Tron 3 is no longer happening. It's something I'm very disappointed about because I do want to see where the story goes next. Next, Tron Legacy ended on a very, very fascinating note. note. Okay, it ended in a way which made me have even more questions and I want those questions answered. Looks like we're not going to get those answers because Disney decided to drop the production entirely. they calling it quits with Tron 3 even though Joseph Kosinski was originally signed on. Garrett Hedlund and Olivia Wilde were signed on to a pair uh, and they were supposed to start filming in Vancouver. Uh, in fall of this year, uh, but it's not happening anymore. Now, the question is why isn't it happening anymore? Well, I can tell you that right now. While a lot of blogs and a lot of news articles, I mean news websites, news entertainment websites are not reporting this, I'm pretty sure it has to do with the following, and that would be Tomorrowland just didn't work for the studios. Okay, it just didn't work. Okay, their Disney Pixar films do well. Their films, their live action films based off of their classic fairy tales do well. But other pieces of, of, of um, I guess uh, other uh, pieces, other live action productions just don't do well unless it's a, uh, a Pirates of the Caribbean uh, sequel. You know, if it's part of the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise, then it will do well. But anything else that is live action, that is not a Pixar film, and that is not based off of their classic fairy tales, does not do well. And let me provide you with an example, or several examples. John Carter, okay? Based off of John Carter of Mars, which came out, which the original source material came out in, I think, the 1930s, okay? Nobody really cared for that film. I mean, some people did. They contributed to uh, a $73 million domestically and uh, $284 million worldwide against a $250 million budget. That's a box office bomb, okay? That is something that definitely uh, um, screams at Disney saying that we don't need to make another one. This was a disappointment. It was a poor investment, okay? So John Connor is one of those examples. Next, The Lone Ranger, another very expensive movie from Disney. Lone Rangers is of course based off of I think the the TV show of the 1970s. I used to watch it, but I can't remember if it was uh if it came out in the 80s or 70s. Not that I ever existed in the 70s, but still. All right, it consisted dur it, it existed during that time. It had a 215 million dollar budget. Very expensive movie. It made 89 million dollars domestically and 260 million dollars worldwide. Still not a very big profit margin for Disney Studios, okay? And also, it wasn't that great of a film to begin with, just like John Carter of Mars. Moving on, we got Tomorrowland, okay? Very expensive film. 190 million dollar budget not including marketing costs. So far, after its second weekend, $63 million domestically, $70 million uh, um, uh, um, internationally, not quite what Disney Studios was expecting, unfortunately. So because of that, we are not, <clears throat> Disney, does not Disney Studios does not want to risk, you know, losing out again on another live action film. All right, these live action films are very expensive to make and they just don't bring in the box office dollars that Disney wants to see. So it's not happening. It's a huge disappointment. The story continues, but it stops right there because Disney put a thick concrete wall in front of the production and it's no longer happening, which is very, very unfortunate. So there's a petition going on, which, um, um, which, uh, um, uh, where, where, where the fans want to have this movie go on, all right? And I forget that uh, how many signatures they need. I don't know if it's half a million or a million signatures, but if they get that certain amount of signatures, apparently the government has to make it happen.
Okay. So um, that's going on. I'm not even going to leave you the link to that petition just because it's not going to... Uh, just a petition does not make things like this happen. What makes things happen is money. Money talks. No money, no talk. <laughs> okay? So if you want to see a movie like this happen, you got to present... Uh, You've got to present examples of, uh, you know, financial statements. The only way we can present this before the movie gets made is a Kickstarter campaign. All right. Essentially, 20th Century Fox got to put out a Kickstarter campaign. Get the movie funded. Okay. Get the movie funded. See if it's worth their time. And then, um, and then uh, just like the Veronica Mars film, which raised a million dollars to get made, it, it ended up getting made. Well, it looks like we're going to have to raise a hell of a lot more than that. So if there are that many fans, I'm, I'm talking about that many actual fans of Tron, then this movie can get made. This does not include the general movie going public that contributed to the rest of the box office that um, Tron Legacy made. Okay, So don't forget that fans watch Tron Legacy, but there's also the general movie going public, which even makes up a huger chunk than the fans. Okay. So that's all I got to say in this video. League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, Gentlemen is being rebooted. Independence Day 2 has two more potential sequels coming up after. And also Tron 3 is not happening. Let me know your thoughts about that on the comment section below. And as always, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more, hit the like button, subscribe to the YouTube channel, like me on Facebook, The Raging Nation. Also follow me on Twitter, at Raging Nation. My name is Alex. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Peace. I uh, used to be these guys in, uh, you know, black face paint carrying guns. Well, now, you know, those were foot soldiers and now we're getting the foot clan. All right.